One Zambia. One nation. One Zambia. One nation. Am Kabumbu Hakachima Hachilonde, not Hakachena. No. Kabumbu Hakachima Hachilonde. I'm a member of the Central Committee for the Patriotic Front. I'm also the Deputy National Chair Lady for the Patriotic Front. I'm now the Uka Vice National Chair Lady in charge of mobilization and strategy. former district commissioner for Chikankata under the PF government. Without much ado, I will be quick to indicate, like it has already been mentioned, that this is not my show, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to speak to two points that are very close to my heart. I will speak from experience. As a woman, experiencing what is currently happening in the country, and I also speak as former ZESCO board member who was in charge of power in this country uh, under the Tekenko Committee as chairperson and also finance chairperson for one year during the PF government. You might want to know, and I know you already know anyway, that most of the, the power in Zambia is hydro for a very long time. And now Zambia is experiencing drought, has experienced drought, which has affected us in so many ways. Food production has been affected. The production of power at different hydro power points has been affected. What are we going to do? We do have Kariba North Bank, which, which has a capacity of 1,080 megawatts. We have Kafia Gorge Lower, which has a capacity of 980 megawatts. We have the, the, the newly uh, uh, constructed Kafia Hydro Power Station with a 750 megawatts. We do have uh, our wind plant in uh, central province, uh, Penslo, which gives us 130 megawatts. We have the Livingstone first plant, which has 108 megawatts, and many other that I cannot mention. But what are we experiencing as a country? We have problems. We go home, after work, there's no power. We sleep without power. We wake up without power. When do we cook food for our families? When do we iron our, our clothes to get ready to go to work? When do we start producing so that we can be industrious and Zambians and productive? The barber men have closed their barber shops. The town menders along the streets have also closed their businesses because there's no power. The impact of these power cuts are too huge to be ignored. I would like to appeal to the government of Zambia, the New Dawn government. My first comment is what are you doing? to cushion the problems that we the Zambians are facing because of these power cuts. Yeah. To Zesco, I want to ask you a question. Why is it difficult for you to follow the schedule that you have given to the public? Yeah, yeah. We don't know when power will come. Mm -hmm. It comes at 18 hours. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, most of the time, it comes at zero one. Yeah, yeah. It is a problem, meaning we can't even plan our work. Mm -hmm. We don't yeah. even know when to do what. We can't even produce anything. Mm -hmm. And this ultimately will affect our economy because of the low productivity rate. So, Zesco, please follow your schedule that you have given to the public. The new Dawn government, especially Minister of Energy, please don't just sit in Dwee and waiting for the rains to come. Do something now for the rains to come. We have been hearing pronouncements. Recently, they've told Zambia that they've recorded power, some power from the uh, power markets, from the export markets. Recently, a few days ago, they were launching the dollar energy with 105 megawatts of power. But we are not feeling the effects of Zambians. Yeah. Where is the benefit to the Zambians? Yeah. What are we doing? You've told us that dollar will be supplying the mines. But why are we not being satisfied as Zambians? Why are we not being prioritized so that you can help us solve the power cuts that we are experiencing in homes? Because we are not able to do anything. If you have failed, tell us. Do not be shy. Call the technocrats. Zambia has a lot of engineers. Zambia has a lot of engineers in this country. Call them. They know these things. Let's sit together and discuss and interrogate on these problems that we are facing as a country so that we can solve these problems for the majority of the Zambians. Because life is getting stuck. There's completely no one who is living. We are merely surviving. Yeah. And this is not how we are supposed to live as Zambia. No, no. So please contact the experts if you have failed. Don't be shy. 
Consult them so that we can solve this problem. Like I've said, don't wait for the rain season to come. Find a solution now. Our people are suffering and the repercussions are too huge. Yes. The second point, like I said, is not my show, ladies and gentlemen. I want to speak about CDF funds. We have heard the huge pronouncements about the CDF funds. The first round was 25 million plus, followed by 28.3 million plus, and now 30.6 million plus. Where is the impact? No impact. Where is the impact of the CDF funds in this country? We can't see an impact. We can't feel an impact. Who is benefiting? You, the MPs, I want to tell you today, I want to warn you that very soon, be careful. If some of you are misusing these CDF funds, you're going to be arrested very soon. Those are public funds. So you have to be very careful how you use the CDF funds because our Zambians would like to feel the impact of the huge pronouncements. And finally, to the new Don government, we have been listening to you many, many times. We have listened to you many, many times. We are tired of speeches. We are tired of pronouncements. We want action. We want action. Deal with the poor problem. Ensure that the, CD, the CDF funds reach the people that need to benefit. We want to see the impact. We want to feel the impact of the power that we have withdrawn from the export markets into Zambia. We want to feel the impact of the newly launched dollar energy, thermal energy with 105 megawatts uh, plant. Yeah. Where is the impact? Mm. How are you helping our Zambians? Mm. With these few remarks, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to sit since I have already said that this is not my show. I will sit now and I thank you very much for listening. Oh. This is very true. Um, at this point, uh, my name is uh, Miriam Banda Mulenga. I am the bishop. Yeah. The bishop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the bishop. The bishop. The politics. Why? Because God is a politician. After all, it's yeah. about yeah. reigning. Yeah. Politics is about reigning. So uh, I'm in the right space. And at this point, we are going to go to our vice um, national chair. This time it's uh, the administration, the one in charge of administration. Navena, ever kaida ma politicians ye kocha vanga wa beba tisemu koshe kwa vanga. Ezo tuwa chere vati. Okay, it's okay. Kuti mama kosha five in a seven minutes. Kama tisemu kwa vanga kosha deni. Kuti mama tuwe bechi kumuti. Matebo fili. Emu kwa hizo. Navena bara sababu poshi vati poshe kwa. As she comes to greet us, she's going to also tell us what is on our heart in very few minutes. So I'm going to call Madam Adora Piri, who is the national uh, uh, vice uh, uh, chair lady in charge of administration. Let's welcome her. Do you know, do you know the reason why? I'm coming from the crazy background. So she knows very well that you are kapiunga nga watampopula and tabapusha wangu. Yeah, so it's good that we are here, children of God, and uh, I'll go straight to the point. Thank you so very much. As you have heard, my name is Adora Aline Dipiri. I'm coming from Patriot Front. I'm the Provincial Information Publicity Secretary in Central Province, and in Uka, I am the National Deputy Chair Lady. So, so I'll, I'll put my speech into written, but I'll be fast. I'll, I'll, I'll observe time. Uh, good morning, fellow women across the country. Uh, I am 
the member of with the United Kwasa Alliance, Oka, National Deputy Chair Lady in charge of administration, and I'm, I'm, I'm coming from the Patriotic Front led by the 60th President Edgar Chagwalungu, who is also the member who is also the member of Uka Alliance. Allow me to appreciate the Uka Council of Presidents and the Secretary General, Honorable Akimurusa, for giving me the opportunity to be part of the gallant men and women who have stood to defend democracy at this beautiful national nation, Zambia. Thank you for seeing leadership in me. Together we shall triumph. <laughs> I urge you, my fellow women, now this is coming to my fellow women. I urge you, my fellow women, to not stand idly by as our country facts its challenges. If we remain passive, we risk losing our, demo our democracy. Yes. Let, us, let, us, let us speak out and exercise our freedom of speech. Keeping quiet will give room for our country to be manipulated and we will one day wake up to a realization that our democracy has gone, has gone extinct. Um, the reason why I'm talking about waking up with the women, you know, we have been told by the Republican president that hunger is biblical. Yet when, the, when his predecessor was ruling that moment, he was like, Kuli road shedding here and it's cold here, there is no food do, and Mirimi is expensive. Now my question is, when President Garungu was, uh, was ruling this nation, <laughs> so why is it that now, since it's the UPND in power, the Nyangas become biblical? Yes. Now, Oka actually is biblical. Ask me why is it biblical? When we read from the book of First Kings chapter 3, there, we had those two women, remember? They gave birth at the same time. And then the other one overslept. And then when she overslept, so at the end of the day, democracy And we are not going to allow that. In fact, we are not going to be intimidated with the women of Uka. Today you arrest the Honorable Mumbipiri. There is another Mumbipiri mushrooming in form of a daughter. You arrest the President in Awakwi. There is another President in Awakwi mushrooming out there. So, if you share Kulanda, you can get to Alanda, Mukakeni. Nisha Korea, Ngeshi and Gayata Kore Chinshi, Autama to Titikishi. Hello, Gan Maseozi, Gamrefo Kukushako Kuena to Makshako because we are ready. Who in Gramushi too? Atishan, who in Gramushi too? If something is not in place, make it none and in doing so we are not doing good for our families but for the nation at large including the future generations to come yeah. Yeah. in life there are three types of people those who fall under the category of making things happen mm -hmm. and we are here we are here to make things happen yeah. 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 We are here to make things happen in a sense that when the Council of Presidents says, Women Council, let's go, we are not going to listen for, for, to other voices from left, right, center to say, Awe Iwe Ikala, Awe Uka, Tanjo Ipanga Sensi, Uka, Uka is here to stay. We have people who fall under the category of watching things happen. 
And such people, they are Mlomolisti people. <laughs> and they think that if they are not fat and parcel, nothing can be done. Walo <laughs> <laughs> No, we are here to make things happen. Those who want to watch things happen, let them watch. Let them fold their hand. Those are people who are falling under the category of oversleeping. Dead situation is not our portion. We have people who fall under the category of asking what happened. What happened? Let's go. At If we are with it, our money can end At the end of the day, you will find that land is going to pull an eye. Then you start asking what happened. And then when you wait for people to come and explain to you to say, actually, what was there? what happened was this, it will be too late. Wake up from the sleep now and start making things happen. Yeah. It's time to start making things happen. And this country cannot move on its own without the wills, and those wills, it's we, women. Yes. men are hardworking, without a woman, nothing can be done. Yes. So when God says, a woman, you are the help, no, we help in sharing ideas, we, we help, in, we also have a share in national cake. So as a woman, stand up, wake up from that sleep and start making things happen. Don't watch things happen and don't wait to ask you what happened. Yes. Because we are now in Polesha. So, I'm not going to talk much. I'm not going to waste much of the time. <laughs> Now, I'm so kind of that we are Pariamkula and Dirida, not in Iowa, Iowa, But I want to send this message to the president of Zambia, Dr. Akainde Ichilema. In a lava sukawa president, Tipadi Yava Landire, and I didn't carry part to say Zambia to say young is very good. I wait at Waikalepano at the cake of Pushta massage in Sala. That why Kalepano pushed a massage on my hardship. See, you said you will fix now what has happened. Fix it, fix it, fix it. We shall mass ban and angry fiance fiacu won fiat to fix it. We are waiting, we need you to fix if I get to a friend Salah. In fact, in the administration of the 60th Republican president, Edgar Chagolungu. Rotating yari tampa na ndefu ayo kula ndako kuli ifi walaka rotating wa my fellow deputy. Yari tampire mu March, if you remember. Yari tampire mu October. And it was just four hours. But this time, rotating started in March. And yama hours, aushu and kuya kutukulo lena kwa kayesu. Okay, see. So we are not going to wait and we are not going to sit to buy the story at the hardship or oh, anger is biblical. We want him to fix things because he promised to fix. And we want him to fix. Do not fix people. Not panonga na afuma timu fix nye nuri ya watila landa. If actine nga mafaya kushita fix, don't send the battalion of police or soldiers. Just call me a dollar. Go and report yourself. I'm very much ready. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for that uh, uh, speech. I'm sure the message is being sent. And I'm sure all of us, we are getting uh, uh, the concerns that are coming from the women, isn't it? Yes, they yes, They are really yes. coming loud and clear. <coughs> I told you, learn to interpret the times. Mm. So at this moment, uh, we are going to welcome the owner of this show. Ave neba chira chino ava tweeti le. Va chair lady va uka va national chair lady va uka. Tulefu ave se va tuwewe ifilipamu timapamu avo. Let her come and tell us what she 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 feels. Let her come and 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 tell us why she has called us so that we can get the message and run with it. I believe that the two messages that have come from the deputy, I'm sure that is. When I nena chida kutikisha, 
na chila umfa sana elo kabiri na ma plan ya chila isef ya kuchita bale landa ne ndeta mpokule mba ma plans mumutwe if you na la chita so if i am sure we want weva awe ya kankala elo kabiri thank you so much once again those speeches were brilliant i'm sure bambi mwala mona mobubi if you want to fort find you will find it but those were clear loud and clear amen Oh wait, we can't inform a bishop. To the lavati, to the magwati di church. Hey, Bali no insta. I am going to. I want us. We are going to stand as we are. We are coming. The honor of this presser to come and address us. She is the one who is going to give a speech. Let's welcome Madam Faith Muntali, who is the national. Uka chair lady. A big hand for her. Uh, at this point, before I start my speech, I would want to acknowledge the presence of my boss. I salute you, Mama. Our deputy, Madam Honorable Mobi. Thank you very much for coming, our Iron Lady. I would also. Ishimbi, Ishimbi. I would also want to appreciate the Council of Presidents for according women a council to voice out on the issues pertaining to women through uh, the, chair, the chairperson, President Sakwiba Skota, we say thank you to you, sir, for considering women to be part of the Council for UCA. Let's give them a round of applause. And uh, I would also want uh, to give thanks to our SG, is he around? Where is he? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> sir, come here, come here, sir. <laughs> I would want to thank our SG. I call him my son. <laughs> For according us an opportunity to hold this press briefing here at the CF Secretariat. We really appreciate, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> I am Faith Montali, the National Chair Lady for UCA, and also the National Chair Lady for CF, under the leadership of President Harry Kalaba. I know. I know when you hear Montali, you know it's Tumbukaini. And the people say Tumbukas are docile, Tumbukas don't talk, Tumbukas are this. No, mba, umlando wafo tule pita motu wali ambo kulanda. Hey! Wali ambo kulanda. Kaya ni chachi lamo. Na iseti na uka. Eh? Azima ichi na baba. Azima ichi na baba. Chiriko ichi na baba. Kuti anyamuke. Kuti anyamuke. Azima ichi na baba. Azima ichi na baba. There's something that really pricked us, which has made us to rise. Yes. We are not rising for a show. We are not rising to show off. We are not rising just for fun, but because there's something that is pending in us, and there's something that has really troubled us. Because we are Azimai. We are mothers. We are women. 
Women are the keepers of the cities. Women are the custodian of children. Yes. Women are the counselors and teachers. Yes. A woman, even if not educated, she's a teacher. Yes. Just yes. by yes. being a woman. Oh, yes. You teach a child how to eat. You train a child how to go to the toilet. You train a child how to talk. So every woman is a teacher. And if we see something going wrong, we we'll definitely rise up and talk. So that's why we are here, is to point out to do the things that are affecting women. I want to welcome you to this press briefing this morning. This morning, as Kwacha Alliance Women Council and the general public raise issues that are negatively impacting the nation, it trickles down to social groupings of the youths, the children, and indeed the senior citizens. These issues, if left unattended to, will have a disastrous impact on the future of this country. Countrymen and women, nepotism. We want to talk about nepotism. The 73 tribes in Zambia, the peace and tranquility, good vegetation, rainfall pattern, minerals, and precious metals found in this great nation make up the country's definition. Our founding fathers consolidated this definition after the independence by uniting the 73 tribes through opening Copper Belt and Lusaka province for all the tribes who wish to work in mines and industries to do so without tribal segregation. Thus giving it a name, One Zambia, One Nation. Intermarriages further cemented the slogan and Zambia has been one since then. When the seed of nepotism fell to the ground on the Zambian soil, Mr. President Hakainde Hichilema, during your inauguration speech in 2021, you promised to uproot it and maintain one Zambia, one nation. The beginning of 2022 was showered with rapid growth of nepotism in parastatal and government offices. This has caused worry in our nation and as qualified and experienced people are losing their positions based on tribal lines. Experienced and qualified citizens are being sidelined, intimidated and ill-treated because they do not belong to tribes of preference in this country. Mr. President, as women, we call out on you to uproot this tree that is getting rooted and sprouting because the impact is on families, communities and indeed on the country's economic development. Mr. President, take a walkthrough test in the parasitical companies through the human resource officers, check the employment files and look for these specific details. Name of the employee, date employed or date promoted, the qualifications of the same person, and lastly, the person who held that position. Check for these things. Mr. President, you will be shocked by the revelation you will meet in these government offices and parastatal companies. The nepotism does not just affect places of work, but create violence among people and disintegrating the families. Yeah. Mr. President, as families, we have lived as one and we would want to continue like that. Yeah. If, we, if we look at women seated here, imagine we are all sisters married to different men. Our children should be brought up together. They should not be uh, aligned because of their names. So if I am married to Mr. Mlenga, then my children are less humans. Unless I'm married to a name of preference in this country, that should not ha be happening. And that should be scrapped off. Mr. President, we call upon you to uproot that because we know that you have the power to do so. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Countrymen and women, Kadarism. As mothers, we wish to bring this to your attention. A mother's wish everywhere across the world is to see to it that her children grow up to be responsible and dependable. But the animal in man will create hunger crisis, unemployment, and allow a few members of his group to have money and resources. This has been used as a tool to promote Kadarism. Mr. President Haka in the Hichilema, our youths, as you promised during the inauguration ceremony, need to be empowered and be self-reliant in order to achieve sanity and order in our nation. But the rebranded cadres we are seeing now looming the streets of our nation and towns whose videos and pictures are going viral on social media 
pose a threat to the economic growth because it scares away investors. Yeah. Mr. President, mothers celebrated you when you promised to stamp out Kadarism because most people who die or get injured during political violence are youths and women. Yeah. And seeing Kadarism rekindled, and seeing Kadarism rekindled has shocked mothers who have nothing to offer to these youths in order to deter them from this vice. Mr. President, open industries fall up on their opened minds to offer job opportunities to our youths. Our youths need to be responsible for these countries to have responsible future leaders. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, allow not the, the celebration of non kadalism state to be short-lived. You hold the key to this pandemic and as such, you can also end this case if you so wish. Mm -hmm. But yeah. if you Point. ignore this, Mr. President, I want to state this, that help will come from somewhere. Yeah. 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 Deliverance will come from somewhere. 2026, day by time. Mr. President, you may wish, you, you, you may say that no one forces these youths to indulge in such activities. Mr. President, it's hunger that forces them. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, it's the desire to get the dangling carrot because there are some leaders somewhere in your group, Mr. President, who are dangling the carrot to our youths so that when they indulge in such vices, they get what they've been promised. Mr. President, it's the misbehaving under the umbrella of UPND, which is rewarded, and the punishment that is put on the opposition that is causing this cadarism. So if you so wish, Mr. President, you can end this to restore uh, dignity in our country. But if you do not do that, deliverance, Mr. President, will come from somewhere. Mm. Okay. Okay. Countrymen and women, free education. We want to address the issue of free education. It is a well-known fact, Mr. President, that you brought back the free education and as mothers we celebrated you. We celebrated because we know that every child has been given an opportunity to attain basic education which can allow them to attain basic skills. The implementation of free education, Mr. President, has excluded important components which are drivers to education. High cost of living is a poison to free education, Mr. President. Children need to eat. When I talk about one or a school, I have a mukufunga, I have a money fasting at a school. I love a shiny at a president. So, high cost of living has impacted negatively on free education. Go back to what Kaunda did on free education. It was accompanied with low cost of living. Yeah. They even subsidized on Mili Mew. We used to get coupons yeah. because he knew that Zambians cannot afford 350. How many people can buy Mili Mew at 350? Now it's going to 400. Mr. President, revisit that. The, since the government has failed to deliver its promises of selling Mili Mew at 50 kwacha, it has also failed to reduce fuel, which has affected bus fares. Let the government come up with free buses for school-going children as parents yeah. cannot afford. Yeah. The pupil teacher ratio is another deterrent. It is unreasonable to expect even a trained teacher to handle more than 40 or 45 children and still produce excellent results. Mr. President, why have you decided to mock mothers? Children come back home with unchecked work. We thought the vice president, being a woman, being a mother and a teacher, would take this challenge seriously and help find a lasting solution to the problem. But she has decided to take the back seat, forcing us now to cry out because this mockery is unbearable. Yeah. Mr. President, revisit your decision on the 3% royalty tax reduction. This 3% can be channeled to subsidize on Mili Mew and transport in order to foster free education. The main aim should be to save Zambians first. Yes. But if you do not revisit it, Mr. President, yes. deliverance will come from somewhere. Yes. Countrymen and women, cancer. Cancer is a disease in Zambia. 
It makes a sad reading to know that Zambia stands at fourth position in the world in the area of cancer disease. It is no longer a secret that cancer is a pandemic and it's affecting women more than youths and men. The ratio men to women stands at one to five. The cancer hospital, which is just in the capital of this country, is not adequate for all women to be attended to effectively. We appeal to this government to act like yesterday and invest in this crisis. Mothers are dying from cancer uh, that is treatable. Why not use some proceeds from the sale of the three mines on the copper belt to buy machines that can treat cancer? Running to India and South Africa for treatment with this rapid growing number of patients is a drain on the country's revenue, a stress on families as some may not be accorded an opportunity to travel before they die. So the lives of these women, Mr. President, are in your hands. The money that you have, you can decide today to buy cancer machines and treat women. And leaving this issue unattended to is sending women to, to die to the gallows and bringing extinction in this country because there will be no reproduction without women. So we need you, Mr. President, to consider this and save the lives of women because cancer is treatable. But if you do not adhere to that, Mr. President, deliverance will come from somewhere. <laughs> Countrymen and women, hunger, crisis, and load shedding. In as much as drought is as a result of climate change, this government had planned for, for these crisis times and promised the people of this great nation of the possible solutions to such. And one example the president stressed in 2021 was the constant flow of electricity in desert countries like Dubai. He also talked about Singapore, a country that uses refuse to produce energy. Mr. President, why have you dumped such great ideas which made you to be popular? Why have you decided to punish small businesses which depend on electricity? Mr. President, you recently referred to hunger crisis as biblical, and I agree with you. I also want to add that the seven years of famine were preceded by seven years of plenty. Yes. During famine period, mm. Egypt did not face hunger because Joseph, an Israelite, blessed with supernatural wisdom, interpreted Pharaoh's dreams and advised him to stock plenty grain for seven years of famine. Yes. Mr. President, you called the day of national prayer foolish. You have allowed the police to embarrass clergy who are supposed to give guidance when such calamity befalls us. You allowed the sale of grain which Pharaoh protected. This is what makes Zambia different from the biblical hunger. Countrymen and women, I want to state that this government has failed us as women. Men and youths also have been failed. Things can only change if the president revises his promises and implements them. Zambia needs to be salvaged from hunger, anarchy, intimidation, social injustice, nepotism, and discrimination. Mr. President, if you, don't, if you do not pay attention to these issues, race, just like in the Bible, David will arise from the eastern horizon. Yeah. Joseph will arise from the promised land. Surely, deliverance will arise from somewhere. Believe me, it will come and Zambia will be restored again. Yeah. I thank you. profound, educative, and eye-opening speech from uh, the Uka National Chair Lady. Certainly, Nangutawa Kwata Matwi, Awe, the Chair Lady has articulated the issues so well. No kuyatantika wino wino. 
Elo kaviri yale fwa ikwa ukuba addressed. She promises to say, if these uh, uh, issues are not going to be looked into seriously, deliverance will come from somewhere. Madam Chair Lady, permission so that I borrow that phrase and preach it on the pulpit. Yeah. If you do not arise to sort out this deliverance, we will come from somewhere. <laughs> well, at this moment, I would like to invite the media and the people that are here to ask questions. We will be taking three questions at a time. And uh, please, you mustn't repeat the same question over and over again. And we are going to allow only one question per person. We'll take three questions, and then uh, we are going to ask the panel to answer the questions. And then we'll take another set of questions, and then it will go like that. And then we'll have the last set of questions at the end. Then after that, at Brewa Mkulu, I'm a vina palas. I am chewa. Mm -hmm. So Brewa Mkulu, I'm a vina pajani. So when the questions have been answered, uh, we will be able to give an opportunity to Honorable Mumbipiri to just come and, uh, and, and say something. And at the end, the media, you are free. Uh, after the presser is, 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 is finished. We'll start uh, by getting three questions. One question per person, we'll get three questions, and then we'll, go, we'll give the panel to, to answer the questions. Especially our national chair lead, because she's the one that has uh, uh, given this profound speech. So, I'm a question from Kwai Yakulai, so then Wakulai Shabe Noka Kuyachita channel. So can we get the, the, the three questions? One. Only one so far. It was loud and clear. Loud and clear. As we are thinking, we, we, I'm going to allow her to ask the question. And if uh, uh, you, 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 you come up with a question, please, you raise your hand, and I'm going to uh, take your question. Um, can, we, can we get your question, madam? Uh, good, good morning. I'm Edith Mwinga. I write for Central Voice TV. I wanted to ask, as you have articulated the issue, do you think the women movement in the country, for example, NGOCC, women's lobby, are they responding to the cause? <laughs> so uh, I'm sure you have heard the panel, the question that has, has come. You haven't given us your, your, your name. Oh, you, you, you've given us your name. Please, you can uh, tackle that one. Uh, thank you very much, madam, about that question. <laughs> I think the, the non-governmental organizations concerning women issues have gone to sleep. Yes. They have gone to sleep in this country because there are so many issues that are happening and they are quiet. Mm. And we are, call, we are calling out on them to take up their role. Yeah. Because they are not supposed to be aligned to any government or any opposition party. Yeah. Exactly. They are supposed to work independently. Mm. That's why they are called non-governmental organizations. Organization. We did not see any non-governmental organization taking interest in, in the in the in the issue of where the MP in Eastern Province was being attacked by cadres when she was uh, uh, delivering mattresses yes. at the at the hospital, they were quiet about it. So when it comes to women rights and their work, they have failed. Yes. And they can consult me. I'm an expert in that area when it comes to human rights and women rights. I will tell them what they are supposed to do. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, before we get another question, uh, can I ask uh, uh, Madam to comment on that one? Thank you. Thank you for the question, Madam Edith. 
I have been working with the women's lobby group for so many years now. I have worked for the women's movement under the YWCA for five years. And uh, when we started our career in the women's movement as young people, we were very vibrant. We were very courageous. Why? There were no policies everywhere. I want to assume and believe that uh, civil society organizations, the NGOs, the churches, the women, the majority population in Zambia are scared to speak because Zambia police, you are too much. You cannot be everywhere at every time, every minute. You go to church, we find the police. In the communities, you are driving those vehicles with soldiers everywhere. You think the women will come out and voice and say anything? No. We are scared of to be arrested because we look after children, we look after families, we don't want to leave our children and go to prison. So we do not want to see the police in the community at wrong times. Do the right job, you are a police service, you are not a police force. Stop arresting people, stop rounding as if you have got nothing to do in the country. Do your job properly. I want to believe the women are scared to speak because they don't want to be arrested. Thank you. It's been explained loud and clear. Can we get uh, some questions? I, I, I saw a hand here. Yes, ma'am. And another one. Yes. Another one. We've got two. So can we get the question? Good morning. My name is Jarvis Control from Central Radio. I would like to find out, looking what the issues that you have uh, motivated so far, are we ready uh, to have a female president in the United States? Okay. Can we get that question? The question is, looking at the way the issues have been articulated, she's asking, do you think that we are ready to have a female president in 2026? I'm sure that question is here. So can we have uh, the next question, please? Good morning. My name is yeah, my name is Mishek. Mishek Mungeli Irongo. The question that I have is um, there is a general narrative that women naturally don't support each other. Exactly. What, uh, if this narrative is true, how do you think this problem can be solved? Thank you. I'm going to throw the questions to the panel so that they can uh, answer them. And if there are others who have questions, please, can you indicate? Because if there's no one indicating, we are going to close with those questions. Do we have other questions? If you have the questions, please, you can come closer. As they are answering, then you are going to be the next. If not, then we are going to close with those questions. Madam. Thank you very much for the two questions that have come, and I want to believe those are the last questions that we are going to, <coughs> to attend to. Uh, there are two questions. Uh, do we, are we ready to have a woman president and uh, why don't women, support, it is believed that women don't support each other. The question about women not supporting each other, I'll give it to our deputy SG for Uka, Madam uh, Honorable Mumbi, to tackle that question. I will pick uh, the question that our sister has asked. Um, if you look at a man and you look at a woman, we have a lot of similarities. We, we both have brains, we both have eyes, we both have ears, and we both uh, uh, are able to process our thoughts. And that's what makes a human being. These, are, these other parties are biological, which cannot be used in uh, leadership. But what is mostly used in leadership is the head. The ears, the brain, the eyes, so that you are able to understand the issues. So. To answer that question, we are ready to have a woman as a president. Yes. The, only thing, the only thing we are not ready to have is a leader that will mislead Zambia the way we are being misled. One Zambia! One nation! One Zambia! One nation! I have no much to say, 
but uh, thank you so much for everyone who has been congratulating me for the position which I've gotten as Deputy Secretary General of UCA. My name is Amumbi Piri. I'm a member of the Central Committee in the Patriotic Front. I was first elected as a member of parliament in 2006. Then I was a youth. I was nominated again. <laughs> I've been Zambian High Commissioner to Kenya, Israel, Seychelles, UN Systems, Kenya, and South Sudan. Actually, I'm like my son-in-law. I was the first ambassador to present credentials to South Sudan. Kaid is always first. You may wonder whom I'm talking about. I'm talking about the President of the Republic of Zambia. Dr. Hakainde Ichilema. He's always the best. He told us this time when he just came from the UK, where he went to get the doctorate, that he was the first after Kaunda. I don't know how you become first when somebody else has done it. But uh, Tafiala is always the first. You may wonder, I'm sure all of you heard it came from himself that Mumbi is my relative. Yes, I'm his relative, I'm his mother-in-law. And he's the first to have sent his mother-in-law to jail. <laughs> wow, from that. He's the first, truly really is. Let me just respond to what uh, my son has uh, said. It's a notion which people, you men make, that women don't support each other. That's a lie. It's a lie. Women, we support each other. This woman who is here, who was sent to jail, by the son-in-law, was only saved by a fellow woman. Yes. If it was a man who the police followed to his house, as diplomats, me, a woman who saved me, was followed by the police yes. to say to Amikon Kamayo, we are going to give you a job as a diplomat mm. and we are going to give you money. If it was a man, you know, Ishtanga and maximum. It's a woman because even when you look at the scenario, do you know that women have integrity? Yes. Yes. This woman refused and said it's me who was in that vehicle and it's me there were two men already who were given one of them the lawyers asked is it you brian mulenga who was given a tanker last week and he said yes in court it's me eh? a man this woman of integrity said no the presence of my husband you know this issue I've even reported to the anti-corruption commission and I wonder why these police haven't been arrested in the presence of his children his brother's children his own blood it's a nosha, Madam Chair Lady. That's how they want to confuse us. And when I heard that I've been appointed as a Deputy Secretary General, I cried. My husband asked, why are you crying? I said, coming again or in the limelight as a woman with what is happening with our women. Do you know that it's a shame when we look at our fellow women who are heading this institution, look at Parliament. Mm. What parliament has become? 
Mana Muntari, there's nothing to celebrate about. We really have to prove ourselves. Yeah. Because the women, look at the vice president. Yeah. How can you sell to yourself? <laughs> what a child. Look at the electrical commission of Zambia. Yeah. It's being headed by a woman. Yeah. Look at the disgrace yeah. these women have brought to us. Yeah. But speaker and Gavai, my name is Shatara Monapo. I've been in parliament twice under the letter Musa Manamuamba, under the leadership of Patrick Matibin. Me, I was arrested with the Honorable Jim Kapato. Under Sadiq, which we follow, a parliamentarian cannot be arrested when parliament is in session. Mm -hmm. Ina when I was arrested, Navajin Kapat. Mr. Speaker Amusa Mwanamu Ambwa sent the sergeant at arms. He couldn't believe. Why can't the parliamentarian under 30? Mwamuvika na Marcells. A speaker with integrity may he so rest in peace. Sent his sergeant at arms at central police to come and confirm Ganava send the parliamentarians. Baba you know, Shitama parliamentarians, what I'm going to do with parliament. So I cried. Why? Because of the time when I've been given this position. When women who are there, who are supposed to make us shine, have degraded us. They have brought shame to us. But we can change that scenario. And it is with you as the national chairperson for women. Accommodate everyone. I know from this place, this is where I found Bama yoba judis kabemba. Ngaba isa tivale fuwa kujo ina kui kukuka. Tuiva kanka mba. Let us welcome everybody. Yes. I was talking on radio. Balela nda na isa abeba nati. Nangu ni mouse sampanga ni shirele. Watare fuwa kujo ina uka. Kumu pokelela. Ichin tutulipo. We shouldn't even think of positions. It's into to people. It's like kumwe. We no kona fumandi wafchin sadi. People mistake me from east for easterners. Now kuwa kofi pan taku ababa na kashia basu. Kumwe. And you know, when I look at my son, I wonder the bitterness I see in his face. But me as a mother, I pray for him. And I know umutima ukabwera. You cannot go into that prison. Wafuma. Waliba bitter filiana. Pame ensu adiamba no kumone kwa umukote kwa titemu aiche. Because of bitterness. You can't do that. Ishtaya abamu ni amujere ni mbi nifye na ikere mu 129 days. You know, I care more 429 and a quarter days. I understand. Mudiamu aboku pepper. You've up in pushen kwa mayova na waku. Yaba I care koka tushinga ni three four days. If you have a mudiamu aboku pepper. You know, no bomu ana wandi. Doctor haka inde ichire ma. Kwe shamo muti ma. Enu amprento. Takwa ba. Hello, Katwishwe Nanga Maranda Tipakula and Data Tafiala Gavati Kabika Kweshu. You know the police or the shop. No, they put Kamika Kweshu. The substance is a fuma. Otherwise, 
Don't look at Don't join the fights of other people if shimikumine. me as an individual. You might not know. We are in over me, but we have a few more cataracts. It's all about it. It's all about it. I'm telling you, we need prayers. We need everything. Now, don't tell them why.